Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's July 22nd, 2018, and today we're going to talk about ship tracks, bunker fuel, dirty clouds, and blatant lies. Um, as many of you know, I'm kind of miffed about an article that was recently posted by geoengineeringwatch.org. And I want to really break it down for you now that I'm back home from my vacation. Um, of course, everything you're about to see is free of charge, open source. I only ask that if you're going to support me, you can do that monthly on my Patreon or a one-time donation on my PayPal. Um, I've covered ship tracks for quite some time, uh, going back to at least 2012. Um, most of you may have not even heard of a ship track before, but basically a ship track is a chemtrail contrail from hell, um, over the ocean. And, uh, recently Dane Wigington of geoengineeringwatch.org posted this article Climate Engineering Cover-Up, Geoengineering Over Our Oceans. And in it, he basically alludes to the fact that these aren't even ships making these clouds. And uh, this is not only monumentally stupid, it, there's no science behind it, it's complete fear porn, and I'd like for him to explain it in his own words especially when we know that marine cloud brightening is a primary form of proposed climate engineering. Is it reasonable to conclude this form of planetary geoengineering is exactly what we are witnessing over our oceans? Is it rational to conclude all the, quote, trails and tracks we are seeing over oceans are exclusively from ships, as NASA would have us believe? No, that conclusion is not rational. Are many of the... That conclusion is not rational. And then he goes on to allude that basically these are planes making these clouds over the ocean. Um, and many of us have seen planes block out the sun. Um, I'm a, as opposed to that as anybody else. Um, I don't like planes making clouds. I don't like ships making clouds. But for him to basically take my research and spin it into a fear porn seven minute documentary is not only laughable but very detrimental furthermore um dane says this at the bottom of all of his articles this may be freely reprinted so long as it's unaltered all hyperlinks are left intact and credit for the article is prominently given to geoengineeringwatch.org and the article's author with a hyperlink back to the original story nonetheless he takes no shame in stealing my patent list, which he plagiarized um, several years ago. And of course, he did not do follow his own rules. Okay, so this patent list was created by me um, back in originally 2011. You can see the original patent list here. On, uh, on climateviewer.com. It's also available on weathermodificationhistory.com. So um, Dane has no shame about plagiarizing and taking other people's work without giving a link back, but requires you to do the same on his page. Of course, if you scroll to the bottom of climateviewer.com, you will see that everything on here is Creative Commons Non-Commercial 4.0 International, which means that you can do exactly that. You can repost anything from climateviewer.com as long as you give a link back to the original. Um, but unfortunately, Dane has been taking credit for my patent list for many years. So this one's right back at you, homie. Um, we're going to talk about ship tracks and bunker fuel and the real story behind how this works because... Um, his allusion to the fact that this could not possibly be coming from ships is just pure stupidity. Um, these are what ship tracks look like. You can see them on climateviewer.org. This is my map. And if you just scroll down to the NASA satellite section, 
you can change the date and you can go back all the way to the year 2000 and look at many different ship tracks. And I have two different versions of the satellite up here um, currently. And what you'll notice is that there's a true color version and then there's what's called the Bands 367. And when you turn on the Bands 367, it actually highlights the ship tracks, even the ones that are in the cloud banks that are invisible. So ship tracks do come from ships. And the cause of this is something called bunker fuel. And I'm going to go through all the details. All of this will be later referenced in an article on climateviewer.com so that you can do your homework and know the truth about ship tracks and bunker fuel. So let's go through this rather quickly. Um, I have an article. This is dated 2014. Sulfuric acid from aviation and ship tracks may be higher today than geoengineering solar radiation management would require in 2020. I don't know why the zero is missing. I'll fix that after the video. Um, but this is from a dude named Oscar Escobar. And he basically goes in here and breaks down the math that what David Keith was talking about. It would take 25,000 metric tons of sulfuric acid to, to cut global warming in half after one year. Um, and he says, consider what might happen if we started using stratospheric aerosol to ameliorate global heating if it succeeds. It would not long, be long before we f face additional problem of ocean acidification from acid rain. Um, you know, but he goes on to say, look, you know, we're already putting way more annual contribution to atmospheric sulfur budget by aircraft of 2.7 kilograms of H2SO4. Um, and that was in 1990, so aviation should be up 110% by um, compared to 1990 levels, which puts us, in other words, we're way ahead of schedule for what David Keith and the geoengineers were asking for when they said they wanted to do stratospheric sulfur injection. And that sulfur injection comes from jets and boats. Um, so that's just a fact, um, 2014 on that article. Um, and let's go to the next one. The next one is chemtrails explain the geoengineering solar radiation management field experiments. This is dated 2015, um, March. And I go through all of the geoengineering experiments that have happened up to this day. Now I'm going to scroll through past the one that the Russians did, um, where they were flying a Russian hind helicopter and experimenting with clouds and go to this one it's called e -Peace, the eastern pacific emitted aerosol cloud experiment e -Peace combined a targeted aircraft campaign off the coast of monterey in july and august 2011 with embedded ship and satellite observations and modeling studies atmospheric conditions and in the northeastern Pacific during July are ideal for formation of homogeneous layers of persistent stratocumulus clouds. The layers observed have consistent diurnal characteristics, cloud thickness of 100 to 300 meters, and cloud top heights typically below 500 meters. The susceptibility of cloud albedo to particulate pertur perturbations is well documented for the eastern pacific near 36 north blah 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 and what basically happened here was they were doing ship track experiments to do geoengineering and they showed how they could spray emitted particles it would mix with clouds and change the reflectance of clouds e piece and as you can see here here's some of those funky patterns you see and of course, you know, this was the plane flying overhead, you know, tracking all this. And here's the actual ship making the ship tracks. I mean, take a look at this picture. Let's, let's blow it up because uh, it's pretty interesting to look at. I mean, look at these poor fools down here on the deck. You know, they're burning that fuel oil mixture and making clouds. And this is what ship tracks look like when it's an, when it's a geoengineering experiment, not just coming from international cargo ships. So e piece was a thing, um, and it happened back in 2011. Um, as you can see, 
We got the images on all that there. Um, photographs of the RV point sir from Serpus Twin Otter showing a persistence of the plume of smoke from the ship in the atmosphere and some of the aircraft instruments for measuring the particles. There they are there. So they were measuring the clouds they were making. Um, B, the production of smoke. One of the two smoke generators used producing smoke and the operation of smoke generators on the stern of the RV Point Sur, that's the name of the boat, and the aerosol instrumentation on the bow of the RV Point Sur. So they had, you know, instruments in the boat, in the plane, measuring the clouds they were making. This is a geoengineering experiment, but it was a boat, not a plane, uh, Mr. Wigington. Unfortunately for you, you have once again failed at your fear porn um and we go a little further with this one uh dated 2014 harp and project lucy in the sky with diamonds now the interesting part about this this is about something called the clathrate gun hypothesis or methane doom or runaway global warming caused by methane clathrates or frozen methane venting into the sky a favorite topic of Mr. Wigington. Um, and this comes from a group called the Arctic Methane Emergency Group. Um, they have since deleted their website. You can find it on archive.org. It's ameg.me, A-M-E-G dot M-E. Just go to archive.org and check it out. And uh, they called it the day the oceans boiled. And basically they said that dinosaur farts, um, you know, created a lot of CO2 and methane, and that melted methane hydrates, and that killed the dinosaurs. And that there is some 1,000 gigatons of carbon um, contained in methane hydrates in this East Siberian Arctic shelf, and 700 gigatons of free methane is trapped under the Arctic submarine permafrost, and that up to 50 gigatons could be released abruptly at any time soon. So the Arctane, Arctic Methane Emergency Group came up with a strategic plan. You can see a copy of that right here. Um, and what did they say? You're not going to believe this. Try to maintain or even enhance the cooling effect from currently emitted sulfate aerosols in the troposphere at mid to high northern latitudes. For example, the regulation to ban bunker fuel for ships should be relaxed while encouraging the continued use of bunker fuel where the resulting aerosol emissions might be beneficial. Now, that is exactly what's going on. The you know, when you got the AMEG group, Arctic Methane Emergency Group saying, "Hey, let's use more bunker fuel. Let's not ban it because banning it would be bad. That would make less ship tracks." And then that could actually cause the planet to heat up. And we like geoengineering the ocean with boats using bunker fuel. These are facts. Um, they also go on to say, let's make more contrails and encourage flight paths of commercial airplanes to reduce positive and increase negative net forcing. That means cool the planet. Um, and you know, the list goes on and on. Prepare the supply and logistics for spraying aerosol precursor in large quantities, preferably in the lower stratosphere, for de deployment by next March or April. Um, and this was written in 2013, so by you know, the next year. We need to get more titanium oxide. Prepare for large scale deployment. Marine cloud brightening with a view of deployment on a large scale in the spring of 2013. Um, so yeah, they were talking about making a lot of ship tracks and they're and, and saving the planet from methane doom, um, you know, using ship tracks. Well, interestingly enough, if you do a site search on geoengineeringwatch.org, site colon geoengineeringwatch.org methane, what you're going to see is about 1,890 results because apparently Dane is fascinated with methane. The global methane emergency is now. Methane release and geoengineering cure that is fueling it. Methane and the risk of runaway global warming, the clathrate gun hypothesis. He believes all of this stuff. In fact, um, he says 
almost word for word what the Arctic Methane Emergency Group says. He believes that. So he's a believer in global warming. He's a believer in methane um, doom, the methane hypothesis that we're all going to die from methane. And he believes geoengineering is already occurring. Um, sounds like normalization to me. Um, he used to share videos from a guy named The Harp Report. On The Harp Report's About page was a link directly to John Neeson's blog, Arctic News blog, which is a the founding member of, get wait for it, AMEG. So this is not a surprise to me at all that um, Dane would come out hard against the fact that ships are making you know sulfur emissions and, and the ship tracks are, are a problem. Um, but for those who don't know that, you know, that's part of the problem. So what is bunker fuel? Um, bunker fuel is the dirtiest form of fuel. It is a generic term given to any fuel poured into a ship's bunkers to power its engines. Deep sea cargo ships typically burn heavy residual oil left over after gasoline, diesel, and other light hydrocarbons are extracted from crude oil during the refining process. So it's like gas leftovers. Um, industry material safety data sheets for marine sa uh, fuel oil classify it as hazardous and very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. Bunker fuel is a graded A, B, and or C, with C being the thickest and most viscous, often requiring heating or blending in order to make it flow. Mixed with up to 10% of other lighter fuel, such as diesel, it becomes cheap fuel for shipping. Characterized as a persistent oil, it is likely to spread large distances because it does not easily evaporate. That's why bunker fuel has such a, a large effect on clouds. It's a brown, it is brown to black liquid with characteristic odors. Vapors are harmful if inhaled. Exposure can cause eye or skin irritation. Suspected of damaging fertility may cause organ damage through prolonged exposure. exposure. Harmful, harmful to fish, toxic to crustaceans and shellfish, very toxic to aquatic plants with potentially long-term adverse effects. Contains constituents part constituent parts with potential to bioaccumulate, meaning eating any large fish, probably got some bunker fuel in it. Um, left stagnant in storage tanks, deadly hydrogen sulfide gas can form. And the source for this is a um, material safety data sheet, which I had to dig up from archive.org, which will also be linked in the article. And you can see it right there, Shell Marine Fuel Oil. Um, so bunker fuel is some dirty stuff it is the worst kind of fuel you could use and they use it because it's cheap oh and by the way it makes clouds and cools the planet so and arctic methane emergency group is pro bunker fuel because it makes clouds um in addition at the weather modification conferences um this is in 2010 I have two videos, which you can see I posted quite some time ago. This was posted in 2013. Geoengineering marine stratocumulus clouds. Where, when, and whether to inject aerosols. That is geoengineering with ship tracks. With sh dirty bunker fuel and ships, not planes. Not as he's saying, this is, this is a real thing. Um, you got to watch the video. Uh, next up, marine stratocumulus decks, natural laboratory for inadvertent planned cloud and planned cloud seeding. This is also from 2011 at a weather modification conference. Joint section, joint session one, modification of marine and supercooled stratocumulus. And they were talking about exactly that creating ship tracks at the weather modification conference using boats using bunker fuel um so of course i dug into this pretty heavily and i wrote an article for mit university's climate x called accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails and in it i took offense to something that i had just read 
And this is from MIT Technology Review. You can see the article yourself right here. We're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. And there's your ship tracks. And in it, they basically come out against regulations to ban bunker fuel. So why is MIT University saying, let's use more bunker fuel, let's continue to use bunker fuel because it puts sulfur in the sky, it makes clouds and it cools the planet. So that's a good thing. Um, and of course, I raise hell about that, show some ship tracks right here. And um, I say 16 ships produce more CO2, probably I should have said particulate matter, but regardless, than all the cars on the planet. But global warming is our fault, question mark. All that CO2 doesn't matter because ships create sulfuric acid clouds that blanket the ocean and cool the planet. Um, and, you know, here's from their own documentation. Um, there's one thing we we do know we can produce an amount of cooling power the sulfate aerosol in the troposphere as emitted from coal-fired power stations and from ship bunker fuel this aerosol has offset co2 warming by around 75 percent in the past century there should be a temporary suspension of initiatives and regulations to suppress these emissions while they have are having a significant cooling effect on the northern hemisphere unless human health is at risk which it is because salt breathing sulfur is hazardous to human health um, action plan try to maintain or even enhance that uh, cooling effect from currently emitted aerosols in the troposphere for example the regulation to ban bunker fuel and that's straight from the AMEG strategic plan it's identical. So what they said in this MIT article is identical to what the Arctic Methane Emergency Group said to world leaders in 2012. We need more ship tracks. Um, you know, and then they go on to say, we suggest that the G20 should initiate an international project with the Manhattan Project's focus and intensity. Um, John Neeson, chair of, wait for it, AMEG. Um, so I had originally called this the new Manhattan Project um, long before a certain author made it the title of his book based on this quote, but regardless, everybody plagiarizes Jim Lee. Gotta love that. So in the UN's International Maritime Organization announced that by 2020, international shipping vessels ha will have to significantly cut sulfur pollution. Specifically, ship owners must switch to fuels with no more than 0.5% sulfur content down from the current 3.5% or install exhaust cleaning systems to achieve the same reduction, Shell noted in a brochure to customers. And that's what they're mad about they don't want that um you know and this is the best part um towards the end of the article this is a quote another wrinkle is that ships emit other particles that can sometimes also stimulate cloud droplets to form including black carbon something i talk about all the time when i refer to chemtrails and cirrus clouds matter soot um, so soot and black carbon synonymous, they're part of the same problem. They are a cloud condensation nuclei. Carbon black, a major component of soot. Removing sulfur from the fuel could alter the size and quantity of these particles, which could affect clouds as well, says Lynn Russell, professor, professor of the atmospheric sciences at the Scripps Institution for Oceanography. So that's where this is all coming from okay that they want to cut bunker fuel because it's bad for the environment but the geoengineering IPCC global warming crowd they want to continue to use it because sulfur from bunker fuel creates more soot which creates more cloud seeds which creates more clouds and of course um, we're approaching dangerous thresholds of temperatures increases, so additional bump of 0.1 to 0.2 degrees is something that is, at, we as a civilization should be watching really, really closely, says Kelly Wasner, Principal Director of the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. 
something he very briefly mentioned in his video. And yes, marine cloud brightening is an issue. That is part of what they were doing with the EPS experiment. Um, this was originally called the Silver Lining Project. You can read all about it on um, climateviewer.com. Um, the principles of this are Stephen Salter, John Latham, um, and Pacific Northwest National Labs, Leeds University. Um, so this is a very multinational project um, to whiten clouds to make them brighter, to reflect more sunlight. Um, none of this is made up, but it all has to do with ships and bunker fuel. And in the case of the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, literally a, a flotilla of drone boats that spray sea salt into the sky. So that's their plan. Um, moving on to the next thing. Oh, wait. At last, the shipping industry begins cleaning up its dirty fuels. Dated June 28th, 2018. So, despite all their bitching and moaning, it looks like there are few, very few examples of air quality regulations that have such broad reach and benefits as this one, says one scientist. And, you know, if adopted, this will change the ship tracks forever. So, it seems like this is going to happen. Roughly 70% of shipping emissions occur within 250 miles of land, exposing hundreds of millions of people to harmful pollutants. You're breathing this crap. Um, not only is it making clouds over the ocean, you're breathing this crap, and it is coming from boats. Um, so, once again, I take serious offense to Mr. Wigington, um, you know, inferring that this is some kind of secret program to spray from planes. No, ship tracks are a serious problem. I've been talking about it for more than five years, and I know a lot about it. That's why I'm making this video. Um, check this video out. I'm going to kill the sound on that because I don't want to get it. There you go. Yet it generates 90% of the sector's sulfur emissions. For example, in just one day, one cruise ship emits, emits as much particulates as 1 million cars. And it's harmful to human respiratory systems. But Goldman Sachs wants you to know that, hey, it's going to cost you money. Switching to cleaner fuels like LNG or installing expensive scrubbers, uh, you know, it could be in 5,000 ships in it by 2020, could cost an extra $240 billion to consumers. So, you know, the powers that be, you know, the guys, the globalists, um, they don't want this to happen either because it's going to affect their bottom line. Um, so you know, this, it's very similar to the, the chemtrail situation with aviation. It's all about dollars per gallon. They, you know, people are profits over people and planet. Um, where, whereas, you know, the bunker fuel is cheap, it's dirty, and it, it also cools the planet. That's a win, win, win for the globalists. Um, but for us, the people who have to breathe it, the people who have to see, you know, um, scavenging of water over the ocean, less rainfall over land, and then all the dirty pollution, we're the ones that suffer. So there's that. Um, you know, they have satellites that track ships, dirty emissions, and from orbit, you can see ship tracks here. I'm going to post all these links up together. Um, this is over the Great Lakes. You can see ship tracks forming right here, the black lines. And as they drift, they get bigger. You can see the actual boat moving right there. If you look very closely, I'll link this up as well. Um, but, you know, effects of contrails and ship tracks on climate, read it. Um, you know, it's got a lot of information in there. This is a serious issue, um, both. Planes and ships making clouds affect climate to a greater extent than CO2 ever will. Um, and cloud aerosol interaction happens to be the greatest unknown in climate science and is barely accounted for in any climate science models. So that's why it's a big what if 
um, whenever you're talking to any you know geoengineering or climate scientists about this topic. They don't know squat about clouds and how they affect the climate. Uh, but they think they're cooling the climate, so let's continue to do it. Um, but regardless, uh, these clouds are called ship tracks. <laughs> and they are made by ships. So, um, Dane also goes, I don't know why any of these ships, you know, some of the weird trajectories we're seeing. This is marinetraffic.com. You can, tr you know, track all these uh, boats in real time and see where they're going but generally speaking they're going where the ship tracks are going despite what he claims in his seven minute video here's another example of a marine traffic um you know zigzag lines these are where the ship tracks are occurring period um this is not a conspiracy this is a pollution problem oh it's geoengineering also but they call it accidental geoengineering just remember that MIT will call it accidental experiment in reducing global warming because this pollution happens to be cooling the planet and they like pollution as long as it's cooling the planet. So that's the story. That's the big story that ships are geoengineering the planet. It is caused by bunker fuel. The bunker fuel is loaded with sulfur. The sulfur creates more soot and the soot creates more clouds. Um, last little what if in a recent article I did, thunderstruck chemtrails, chaff, lasers, rockets, and lightning control. It was recently found that there's something in the air. Ship tracks affect lightning. So turns out wherever the ship tracks are leaving these high sulfur, high soot clouds, there's also increased lightning. That's pretty amazing to me. So um, just, just an interesting little side note there. Um, they're affecting the climate in many ways that are not well understood. And uh, these are particulate matter under 2.5 nanometers. Um, so these are nanoparticles of um, particulate matter that create clouds. And they are created by dirty bunker fuel, which the United Nations are trying to get rid of as we speak. And they don't like that. They really don't like it. So um, there's always going to be this tug of war between the industry, which wants to continue doing what it's doing, profits over people and planet, um, as my homeboy Max Mogram likes to say. Um, and, you know, th those who would try to use pollution as a way to ameliorate global warming, do geoengineering, do marine cloud brightening, all of that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, um, you know, what, what Dane's saying here is detrimental. It's bullshit. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that he would just, you know not really try to understand the information and then make up an assumption like he does because he has such a large audience this will affect people negatively they'll start to write stories about how you know they're have massive planes shooting out clouds over the um you know ocean instead of really holding the shipping industry to account and once again i take offense to that so like i said um, you know, everything I just provided you, the links will be available on climateviewer.com. They'll appear right here in the geoengineering section at the top of the page. I hope that you guys will review it. I hope that you will learn about ship tracks. You can come to the archive section and click on ship tracks right here. Um, this whole article that I'm about to make will also be there. And, uh, know that, you know, there are those who, benefit from making up fear porn and they like to make everything some kind of secret agenda but there are very few secrets left on the internet um you know if you know where to look if you know how to look um you can find out just about anything and i've covered most of it already so i hope that you guys will learn the dirty secrets about bunker fuel the arctic methane emergency group how um mr wigington apparently highly supports that you know methane doom 
scenario and that's why he's coming out hard against ship tracks and making up you know bs so that's my story and i'm sticking to it i hope that you guys will continue to support me on patreon and paypal i hope that you will spread this message understand the material and learn more about ship tracks because this is not something that's going away anytime soon the regulations that they're trying to put into place um won't really occur till 2020 so expect to see many more ship tracks in the meantime the marine cloud brightening project will continue as planned other experiments like epeace the eastern pacific emitted aerosol climate engineering experiment will occur when they do i will cover them um, but ship tracks come from ships they come from dirty bunker fuel learn what bunker fuel is learn what ship tracks really are and how they affect the climate and understand that ship tracks make the chemtrails over your house look tiny in comparison they are sometimes hundreds of miles wide and thousands of miles long they're covering the entire pacific ocean and they're screwing with the phytoplankton something i covered in an article just recently geoengineering and breaking the water cycle i hope that you guys will look at the big picture and understand that screwing with the phytoplankton is probably the biggest problem we have coming from ship tracks because normally phytoplankton would release dimethyl sulfide natural sulfur that would create clouds that would cool the planet and the phytoplankton are dying because we are artificially creating clouds and we've coated the ocean in plastic so there's less evaporation we have replaced the water cycle with all of these geoengineered ideas and it's a bad thing and that's what we're fighting against with the environmental modification accountability act i hope that you guys will support that as well it's available at climateviewer.com slash um and you know i really want to end with this quote never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world indeed it's the only thing that ever has and though our crowd may be small, and though we may be well educated, that's all that is necessary for us to change this world. So it is upon each of you that are in you know range of my voice to learn this material and spread it and understand it so that we can overcome the, the loud mouth fear porn industry and really make a change in this world. Um, I hope that you take this information and you use it wisely because information is power and with great power comes great responsibility. So with that being said, please remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.